Waramai everyone. Waramai is hello in Darug, the language used in the Eora Nation, the land on which our Mabel Pitt Street office is located here in Sydney. My name is Nicole and I work as part of the Mabel Community Engagement Team and I am also a First Nations woman. As we approach Harmony Day 2022, I am honoured to have been asked to lead the gathering of independent support providers through our Acknowledgement of Country, giving respectful reflection and thanks to the oldest living culture in the world, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Harmony Day is an important time to reflect on cultural diversity here in Australia and embrace and encourage inclusivity, respect and a sense of belonging for all people a sentiment that is reflected daily by Mabel through the vision, mission and work you all do. And so, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and we extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. Didgerigora, thank you. Yanu, bye. I've been working independently through Mabel for three years and I have many clients. They're all different and I'm building up connections with all of them. It works for me because not only is it I feel like a pa my passion to work in this industry but it allows me to support my family at home as well so that gives me that flexibility and freedom. The reason it works is the flexibility. It also opens up the, uh, the sector to a broader group of, of support personnel. You don't have to be doing it full time, it can be casual. Now that I'm working with Mabel, connecting with clients, it's freedom. It's given me self-worth. The time from when I first listed my profile to my first client was approximately one week. So I got involved very quickly and uh, that's what we need. We need that sort of productivity. The adjustment from a traditional care role to Mabel has been very satisfying and productive for me. I can earn a lot more with less hours and there's no middle management and I arrange all my own clients and my own hours. I would definitely recommend Mabel to other support workers and I actually have done that and they're working on the platform. And the reason why is I think because it's a very welcoming, very open and very friendly company, that's the vibe I get and a very positive atmosphere. And I really think that they deliver everything that you'd expect from a support platform. Welcome everyone to our small business webinar. And thank you, Nicole, for the acknowledgement to country. I'm Peter Scutt, one of the co-founders of Mabel and also the CEO. And with me today is Kate Carnell, a board member of Mabel, who will be facilitating the panel discussion. I'd also like to welcome the panelists here today, each a successful support provider on the Mabel platform, starting with Suzanne De Giorgio on the far side uh, next to Kate, uh, Suzanne, uh, sorry, Joe Calabria, and also Tammy Hager, who is closest to me. I'd also like to thank our Auslan translators who are here with us today, Amanda and Leah, and also thank you, the audience, for participating and encourage you to submit your questions via the chat function on the mabel.com.au website. I just thought I might reflect on a moment uh, on the video, and, and I'm super proud that Mabel, as a platform, is enabling diverse people and support to come together via mutual choice in communities around Australia and enabling long-lasting relationships to form. Mabel is about connecting people with people and we are equally focused on enabling outcomes for older Australians and people with a disability as well as for you as independent support providers on the platform. I note the last comment in the video by the support worker who said that Mabel is delivering everything you would think of or expect from a support platform. We know however there is so much more we can do and today we are sharing some of the updates on ways we can support you as small businesses on the platform. My own journey uh, towards Mabel and aged care started with my aging parents. Back in 2013, my dad was in his early 90s and frail, 
Her mum was in her early 80s with dementia and they were living in country New South Wales in a town called Wagga Wagga. And the experience for them when I would go back to see mum and dad was a rostered uh, group of support workers that were changing day in and day out. And my father was describing the challenges that presented for mum, who with uh, uh, dementia really had a lot of anxiety and fear and without familiarity, it was really quite challenging. And my dad was a bit of a difficult old Englishman and he never liked people anyway. So he would always say to us, we have all these strangers in our life, please leave us alone, we can cope on our own. And it was really that uh, realisation that the traditional models of support really weren't working for my parents and I didn't think they were working for the people that were being sent to support them with daily uh, tasks. And we felt that if we could actually connect mum and dad with people in their community via a platform that provided safeguards, they could find people that they could really connect with and they could form relationships with and that their rich life story would form the basis of a relationship with the people that came to support them and that that would deliver better outcomes for mum and dad and for the people that were supporting them. So today, um, many years later, and Mabel operating at quite a considerably larger scale, I'm very pleased to share with you all our Market Insights report. This is the report I have with me, but will be available for download from our website in the coming days. And this is a report that outlines how you, as independent support providers, are really pioneering opportunities for small business and sole traders in the care and support sector and responding to your clients' needs who critically depend on you for the support they need to live independently and remain engaged in their communities. It may surprise you to learn that small businesses, including sole traders, account for 98% of the businesses in the Australian economy. And yet in the, care, in the healthcare and social support sector, they only represent 27%. And this is an opportunity. At Mabel, we regularly meet with government and st sector stakeholders to showcase the rich diversity of support people on the Mabel platform and to showcase the important work you do. We advocate for both consumer and support provider choice and control and empowerment. We highlight that small businesses and sole traders in communities across Australia are part of the answer to the chronic workforce shortages that exist in aged care and disability support. Those working in the care and support sector have long been recognised as underpaid and undervalued and not feeling empowered. We also know that consumers want choice and control over their support and in particular value choosing who supports them. The who is very important. We think a significant shift is required to meet the current and future challenges in the aged care and disability support sectors. Challenges such as enabling individual choice and control for people with a disability and older Australians in communities everywhere ensuring that government funding goes further, enabling people who offer support to earn more, feel valued and be empowered, attracting, retaining and upskilling workforce and finding support solutions for thin markets such as regional, rural and remote communities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, LGBTQ communities and, and culturally diverse communities. These are challenges that government, the private sector nor charities will solve alone. The answers are not obvious, and Mabel also cannot solve these challenges alone. But what we can do is bring a technology, innovation and community mindset, and we can solve these challenges with each of you, with our community of independent support providers, and with our community of older Australians, and with our community of people with a disability. We believe in the power of people to shape the future of aged care and disability support, and we want to unlock your power to be successful and help shape the future with us. Small business and sole traders are particularly well suited to support consumers' goals to live a good life independently because all of you operate locally. You're part of and know your community. You tend to be flexible and responsive to your clients' needs. You can be much more innovative and creative because you operate niche businesses within your communities. You tend to be highly motivated because it is your business and you operate with low overheads. Mabel is really intent on facilitating the entry of small businesses into this sector through being a marketing channel, through providing invoicing, payment and administrative efficiencies, providing safeguards for people that allow people to engage direct, directly, being a pathway to learning and development and accredited training opportunities and offering you choice, control and opportunity to maximise your business and to provide the support that people need in your community. 
So you have some really important advantages over the traditional support models. And this is at a time when the nature of care and support is changing. As a person with a disability explained to me, the old system was a support to live. The new system is support to live a good life. And that means the type of support people need to be engaged in their community, to be engaged in, in education and employment and to live independently, it's changing the nature of support. Similarly with older people, they might require personal care, but also lots are requiring support to maintain their independence in their own home and to stay engaged with their community. And hence we see the new government program being called a support at home program rather than a care at home program. So this, na this changing nature of support is really driving an opportunity for small business as they are able to respond flexibly to what they see their clients are needing in their communities and your clients will truly value that. So for us, the future is about embracing different support models that are enabling genuine connections and relationships that allow both the provider and the client to engage on their own terms. The future is also about facilitating or embracing new models uh, which remove a lot of the embedded overhead in traditional models and we enable the savings to be shared between the people that need support in terms of more hours and also the people that offer support in terms of the ability to earn more. So on Mabel, the support providers agree their rates directly with their clients and they do that in communities around Australia and Mabel adds a 5% consumer platform fee and deducts a 10% worker platform fee. So in a typical example where people are agreeing $40 an hour, the consumer is paying $42 an hour and uh, the support provider would be in that example earning $36 an hour. And Mabel's $6 per hour fee over the $42 charged by, uh, paid by the client is a 14.3% margin. So on the Mabel platform, almost 86% of what the consumer pays ends up in the hands of the person providing support versus about 50% in a typical uh, model. Small businesses on Mabel also set their own terms, including their rates, directly with their clients. After platform fees for Monday to Friday, support for social support and personal care type services, the average uh, rates earned by support providers is around $42 to $44 per hour, and that's risen approximately 7% each year over the past two years. And that really shows that the people you're supporting really value you and the work you do. Mabel's low platform fees and your ability to set your own rates is really enabling you to build your business and it's designed to ensure you're feeling valued for the work you do and you can build your earning capacity. We'd like you today to understand more about how to set your rates and how to engage with potential clients in a discussion around rates so that you're more informed and confident as you build your business as an independent support provider. And that will be, there'll be more discussion on this uh, in the panel uh, later. In terms of uh, the Mabel platform, we have almost 10,000, well, in fact, in excess of 10,000 small business owners, including sole traders, providing support to NDS participants and home care uh, consumers. We're attracting a younger workforce on average, but a workforce that ranges from 18 to 82. Yes, we have multiple support workers in their 80s supporting people in their community. And we're also attracting twice the representation of males with about 26% of people on the platform male versus 11% in the sector. The support providers on Mabel are really building their own business in direct um, connections with clients, delivering quality services and earning positive ratings and reviews. They're increasing their skills by doing additional training and are paid according to the services they offer and self-determined uh, rates. Through Mabel, small businesses, that means all of you, have delivered more than 9 million hours of care and support to people in your community, which I think is amazing and something we should all be proud of. Today, we wanted to answer some of the most common questions submitted by you prior to today. And we're going to go through a panel discussion which also discusses some of these questions, but I thought I'd share some of the perspectives from uh, Mabel. Firstly, we've had a lot of questions about planning ahead for tax, leave and super as a sole trader. We're always looking for ways to improve the way we can support independent support providers on our platform and ease the administration and give you the tools and information you need to successfully grow your business. And we're certainly working at the moment on solutions to make planning for tax and super easier. In the meantime, today's panel discussion, will, you will hear some of the practical tips and advice from our panel members about what they're doing to manage this responsibility 
and, my, and what might work for you. We've also had questions about payments. We realize how important prompt and reliable payment is to you as a small business, and we're investing heavily to improve this experience. Today, about 99% of payments collected every day are allocated and paid to you as providers on the same day, although in some cases, because of the way the banking system works, it might end up in your bank account the next day. Also, 96% of invoices are collected and paid within two weeks, but we know the balance of invoices where there can be delays, is that the delay is not acceptable and we're working on solutions. We're going to be making some more announcements on how we're planning and how we're going to be improving the payment experience in the next couple of months. We've also had questions about how Mabel can support you with self-care. We recognise that professional isolation is not uncommon as you often work in one-to-one -one person centred settings with some of the most vulnerable people in society. You support people in non-traditional workplaces, it's inside people's homes, it's, it's within their community and as a result there's often few people to turn to when you need your own support for emotional and health and mental challenges. You've long had access to a closed Facebook group for support providers. Prior to COVID, we were doing real world, real world meetups. You often work in teams, something we really encourage as a way of improving, improving outcomes to your clients and also improving outcomes to yourselves. And all of that has been some level of, of peer support. However, I wanted to announce that this April, we're going to launch counseling services and a wellbeing platform of online tools and resources for the support provider community on Mabel to help you manage your self-care. And this is in response to feedback uh, from you. We'll have more to share on this next month. We recognise part of our role is supporting you to build and manage a successful business. There are so many things we can be doing and we are doing in the background or about to launch to help you with your business. And I thought I'd just share some of the things with you today that we've either been doing or in the process of, of rolling out. So in terms of COVID response, during COVID-19, to ensure you could safely continue providing support to your clients, we're on the front foot with a number of initiatives. So in early 2020, we launched Mabel Equip, an online store to make PPE available to you at cost. And in the last few months, we've also made more than 5,000 rapid antigen tests available below cost at a time when they were difficult to find. We mandated infection 19 control training on the platform and we added vaccination status and made vaccinations mandatory in line with the, the latest health advice and health orders. We wanted to make sure you were across the latest health information were up to date with the public health orders, particularly in relation to how and when you could continue to deliver services to clients. We we're sharing this information at a state and often a local government area level. We enabled virtual support to offer different ways to offer support to minimise the risk of social isolation for your clients and enable you to continue working. We also launched support provider IDs so you could prove your essential workers in geographies that required that. In terms of safeguards, there's a lot of continuous improvement in this area as well. Insurance is an area that's not important until you need it and then it becomes very important, which is why we've arranged a suite of cover, including public liability, professional indemnity and personal accident cover. We've moved those policies that we've arranged on your behalf to Berkshire Hathaway Specialty Insurance, a leading global insurer. Many people aren't necessarily aware that not all insurance is the same. The insurer and the policy wordings are important. For example, many people think all you need is public liability cover. But in the care sector, professional indemnity is also very important when providing any support that relies on your skills, such as personal care. Personal accident cover on the Mabel platform also includes journey cover, so you're covered while you're travelling to and from appointments with your clients. We've also introduced NDS worker screening check badges, so if you've been screened, it's, it can be now on your profile and it's now a filter for searches, and this is giving you access to more clients that want this peace of mind. We've added annual flu shots statuses to profiles as required in aged care. We've also invested heavily in our trust and safety team and the processes to manage incidents and complaints so that we can respond quickly to support you to resolve those incidents and complaints promptly with your clients. Another area that we've worked hard on is the Learning Hub. That's another way that we can support you and this was also launched during COVID-19. When you're an active member of the Mabel community, it unlocks access to our online Learning Hub which gives you access to more than 140 
courses and training materials provided by reputable organisations such as La Trobe University, Cerebral Palsy Alliance, OPAN and Dementia Australia. And this is at no cost to you. Some of the most popular courses on the Learning Hub are being shared with you on the screen. But these are courses that typically reflect people's desire to build a successful business, to work safely, and to be able to make a difference to the people in, in your community. As an example of you know, our desire to continually improve and evolve, I was having a conversation with a 91-year-old recently who, like many people of that age, want to remain living in, in their community independently. She also runs dementia carer groups. And during this discussion, she was sharing with me what she thought was one of the most important skills for people working in the sector, which was communication skills. And she'd said to us, there is a really good course through one of the universities and we are now working on adding that module to our learning hub. If you're wondering how to get on an upskill, we've already sent you an email before today's webinar and the event reminder has more information about the learning hub, including how you can access it. In addition to the professional development opportunities on the learning hub, we're also working actively with TAFEs and RTOs to source subsidised accredited training opportunities and explore flexible online learning models and flexible uh, assessment and placements to help you explore how to upskill and expand the services available to your clients. As the community starts to open up post-COVID, we hope to do more events like this and also in person and restart our very popular uh, community-based meetups so that we can learn from one another and connect with other support providers in our community. We know the days of an independent support provider are not always easy. That is why we hope making some of the tips, resources and information available via the platform to you and via forums like this will really help you to continue to deliver high quality support to your clients in your communities. The last thing I wanted to share to you today was our plans to share market insights with each of you locally that can help you respond to the diverse needs of your clients, but also help you build your business. This means through notifications and other tools that will be available on our platform, you'll get a better understanding of how to best target your services in your geographic area to help you fulfill needs and grow your earning potential. This is a work in progress, but some of the things I wanted to highlight to you, for example, is that there is often significant demand for support on weekends, particularly Sundays, that is not met and rates are considerably higher on those days. Another example is that Melbourne is the major city that has experienced the strongest growth since October last year, with demand growing about 26% on the platform, followed by Sydney growing about 20% and Perth about 20%. In Sydney, there's an estimated need for 1,000 additional support providers on Mabel to respond to the current demand. So let your friends and colleagues know that there is a lot of demand coming through the Mabel platform that we hope independent support providers will be able to uh, meet. It's interesting to also note things like, you know, support requiring showering, toileting and dressing has increased by about 29% since October 2021, whilst jobs requiring meal preparation and shopping grew by only 10%. So personal care is very much in demand. And also examples where demand in aged care on the Sunshine Coast has tripled between October 2021 and January 2022. We want to share these sorts of insights to you locally in your area to help you understand where your clients are looking for, for support and how you can best respond to the support needs in your community. I guess, you know, what I really wanted to, to communicate here today is that we are dedicated to continuous improvement. We are wanting to talk to our community and co-design solutions with you that meet your requirements as independent support providers and small businesses in this sector. And we want to co-design solutions with our older population and people with a disability. So thank you for giving me the time to share some of what's been going on at Mabel and what we have planned. I'd now like to turn to the panel discussion. And it's my pleasure to introduce board member Kate Cunnell, the Mabel board member Kate Cunnell, who will facilitate the discussion with our representatives from the Mabel uh, community of independent support providers. As the former Australian business and family enterprise Ombudsman, Kate is a big supporter of small business across Australia. As a community pharmacist by training, Kate understands communities and healthcare. As a former regulator and having had her own family experience of aged care, 
Kate understands the sectors we support. Some of her past roles have included being the CEO of the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, being CEO of Beyond Blue, where she's now the Deputy Chair, being the former ACT Chief Minister in 1995 to 2000. And in 2018, Kate also led the Carnell Patterson Inquiry on behalf of the federal government into regulatory reforms in residential aged care. Notably, Kate is also an ambassador for New South Wales Small Business Month, and she is a valued member of the Mabel Board. I'd like to show you a small example of the work, done as, uh, of the work Kate has done to help small businesses as a passionate advocate for the engine room of the Australian economy. You are certainly one person who understands everything that small business needs and everything that small business does not need. I've always been struck by two things, your sincerity and your passion. And you brought that in spades to this role with the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman. Fantastic work that you've done and it's very much appreciated. As a business leader and advocate for entrepreneurship, I'm incredibly grateful for the work that you have done, Kate. Your work has highlighted the complexity and challenges that face small businesses, as well as the value and impact that they contribute to local communities. For me, some of the key highlights were the work you did in late payments that saw the introduction of the late payment code by the federal government, but also the work you did in competition insofar as we've seen and pushed through the provisions in relation to the misuse of market power and also in relation to the unfair contracts legislation. On the behalf of community of intermediaries, that's BAS agents, bookkeepers. On behalf of the ICT industry, small business operators and contractors. On behalf of the screen production sector in this country, made up predominantly of small to medium businesses. On behalf of all the natural therapists, thank you so much for your efforts in supporting small business. We would like to thank you for your immense contribution to the Australian business economy and your support and advocacy for a better environment. We'd like to thank you for all the work that you've done and all the effort you've put in to ensure that small business is at the forefront of government policies. We thank you for your advocacy. Thanks, Peter. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And I'd like to also welcome all of those people online as well. And, remind, and a reminder that we are recording this, so you will be able to go back to areas and have a listen to it later. You can also put in a question, of course, as Peter uh, mentioned uh, earlier. Now, you've seen that I am passionate about small business, run my own small businesses over, over lots of years. Uh, but by being small business ombudsman, I really saw just how important small businesses are to our community generally. You know, there's 2.3 million businesses, small businesses in Australia employing less than 20 employees. But I bet you didn't know that there's 1.5 million of those that are sole traders, people running their own businesses, and half a million businesses with less than five employees. Now those businesses make up 35% of our GDP, contribute $418 billion to our economy. So you can see that small businesses and the growth of small businesses matter to everyone, matter to this country uh, significantly. And that's the reason I'm so pleased to be part of Mabel and to be able to talk to all of you today. Because the point of Mabel, as Peter said, about providing better, uh, better services, better support to people um, to stay in their own homes, but it's also to help small business people, people who want to run their own businesses, like the panel we've got here today, um, set up their own business, have the flexibility, the capacity to thrive in small business and potentially to grow your business as well. There's nothing to stop uh, people who are sole proprietors on the Mabel platform from employing some other people or going into partnership with uh, family, friends and others and growing a bit of a business for the future. All of those things are possible. And on the Mabel platform, we give you support in areas um, such as invoicing, marketing, training, um, insurance, as, as Peter said earlier. And this is really important, but I'm gonna give you just two other things I'd suggest you do. There is a site called business.gov.au, which is a federal government site 
gives great information about setting up your own business and a whole range of other things, even where you can get free digital uh, training courses to help you with your website um, and social media, those sorts of things, which can be a bit of a mystery to, to lots of people, but really important in, um, in running your, your own business. Uh, can I also suggest that you download the ATO app? So just go to your app store, look at ATO, download the app. It gives you a lot of really valuable capacity, even down to tracking the mileages, mileage on your car, um, invoices, you can take a photo of them, they go into your, uh, into your tax uh, return, all sorts of really easy and cool stuff and all absolutely free. My story's a bit like Peter's really with regard to my parents. My parents were small business people, but really well organised. They'd uh, organised how they were going to age at home. They'd built a, a great um, granny flat or um, out the back of the family home. It was uh, disability friendly, it was age friendly. Everything was great, except when mum became uh, less well, less able to, uh, to move around and dad was caring for, the, for her, they needed help in the home. Now that was okay, except they ended up with someone different every day or every couple of days. Um, mum didn't like having somebody different in the home every day. She refused to have those people in, in her home. Uh, Dad couldn't look after her. Mum fell, broke a hip, and they ended up in a residential aged care facility that they didn't want to be in. That was um, really tragic for all of us. Um, uh, so, you know, we've got to um, make sure as many people can live in their own homes for as long as they, they can without those issues. Now, I've got three really impressive women here with me, with me today. So you won't have to listen to me much more. We'll be listening uh, to them. But um, as well as them being really impressive, you heard from Peter before that we have a really diverse group of people who are operating on the Mabel platform. In fact, 26% are men and only 11% in the sector more, more generally are men. So it's great that we're encouraging uh, males to become part of this. Uh, I think 50% are new to the sector, so didn't work um, in the sector prior to coming on the Mabel platform. And that's fantastic, because we all know that there is a huge lack of people who are working in this sector. And so that helps as well. 48% speak um, a language um, other than English. And Peter said before that we've even got 82 year olds working on the, on the platform, which is great. So, my fantastic panel. Starting at this end, we've got Suzanne De Giorgio. She's a community home care nurse who's been on the platform since January 2018. Suzanne loves her work and has been able to make a difference in the lives of clients that she works with. She finds the work at Mabel incredibly rewarding and gets a great sense of achievement in what she does. And I've been talking to Suzanne and you can just see that. Well, as she said, her clients ask her to marry her all the time and she hasn't said yes yet, but there you go. Um, and we've got Jo Calabria. Um, she's been on the Mabel platform since 2015. You're one of the old timers, mm -hmm. uh, very definitely. Offering services to aged care um, uh, clients, um, but also focusing on dementia care. Jo offers quality care as, by being reliable, responsible, um, and ensuring her clients can feel comfortable and supported in their own homes. During her time with Mabel, Jo has been able to work with a variety of different clients, both short and long term, and has changed her hours uh, when her personal situation has changed, which mm -hmm. is a really important part of what you can do on the Mabel, Mabel platform. The end, we've got uh, Tammy Hager. Uh, she's an assistant in nursing um, who joined Mabel in 2018. Tammy uh, has experience in working in hospitals and community care. Uh, Tammy enjoys working with a variety of clients from different cultural backgrounds and learning about people's different interests and beliefs um, to help provide a tailored service based upon dignity and respect for clients' values. Uh, you have to admit, great people. Uh, now, over to the questions. 
The first question is how did you make the transition from working for a traditional provider to Mabel? Now, I told Tammy I was going to go to her first, but she said I couldn't, so I've now got it, got it goes to Suzanne first, um, and I'll, I'll go down the, down the, the panel. So, Suzanne. Um, I become a nurse later in my career, um, and I work for a, quite a few agencies up until I um, come to work for Mabel, and I found, um, number one, that the pay was atrocious, absolutely atrocious and the reliability of the um, service people within that agency getting back to the field staff if a client went to hospital if a client went out and visited a family member they didn't ever let me know so you know by the time I get to the client I'm knocking on the door no one's there I ring the office and they go oh Suzanne I'm so sorry they went to hospital yesterday and that didn't happen to me once, it happened to me several times and I, once I saw um, what the Mabel platform could provide me um, by seeing uh, Peter on a panel on TV and he um, just, just did a brief description on what Mabel does, I thought that's the company for me where I can pick my clients, my time, my area, and yeah, and that's how I transitioned to Mabel. To being a small business owner. Yes. Uh, jo? I came from an agency as yes. well, um, and um, I was there for a very short term period. Um, it turned into private care, and it was that particular client that I worked with in private care who suggested Mabel, she said, had this been available for my mum, I would have definitely have used it. How about you try it, Joe? You'll think you'd be great for it. And, and that's, it just went from there. I started part-time on Mabel and it grew into something full-time. That's fantastic. Yeah. I wish my, I'd known about Mabel with my parents too. Yeah. Tammy? I came from traditional care, community and clinical and hospital. And I actually found out Mabel through a girlfriend who was a registered nurse at the time and she worked with Mabel and um, she was sort of skiting how wonderful this platform was and the hours that she could um, get to suit her lifestyle and so curiosity crept in and I researched Mabel and I loved what they were offering. Um, I loved their core values especially. Um, I loved the fact that you could, like um, the others have said, you could choose your clients to have more of a personal care, etc. for your hours, what have you. And so that's how I found out about it and I've loved it. Well, we've got a, a number of people who are new to the platform on, online today. What tips would, would you have for someone just starting out on, on Mabel? Um, Tammy, I'm going to go first to you this time. Come on. What tips would I have? Um, that you're definitely not alone. You are definitely not alone. There's a, a broader community of us out there that, there that if you have questions or concern, there's always someone from Mabel that you can talk to um, via a phone call. Perhaps um, if you know someone in your community who is already working for Mabel, you can buy conversations or what have you. So I would recommend that, that you're definitely not alone. There's plenty um, that you can do online to research about Mabel of community carers out there who are already in the field. Um, yeah, there's, don't be overwhelmed. Don't, definitely don't be overwhelmed of, say, stepping out of a structure where it's been formal um, into going out as a sole trader and working for yourself. Um, yeah. So you're in charge of your, your own destiny. I, I think it's just a matter of step, uh, for whoever you are, being able to step out, be brave, know that you've definitely got value and something to offer somebody out there in the community who needs you, who needs the services that you provide um, and know that you'll be greatly appreciated because when you've come from a formal structure you don't have that sense of value like you do when you're 
working in the community for yourself and you can when you're building the um, morale and that relationship with the individual that you're providing that service to, you can actually start to see the impact and difference that you're making straight away. So don't be overwhelmed, step out and just do it. Jo, what do you think? I was going to say trust the system, trust the process, um, believe in yourself, hang in there. Um, because um, it's, it does work, mm -hmm. it does work. So you've got to believe that you can do it um, and just hang in there. So would you put, um, just apply for one job or would you, what would you do? To well, get it depends a... when you're available. So yeah. um, maybe clear an afternoon, a couple times a week, start from there um, and pick up hours in those and then you'll quickly see that, you know, picking up more hours um, is going to be in demand and you'll have to make yourself more available. Suzanne? Um, I, when I first um, started to work for the community, I am very organised and I got all my ducks in a line. So I knew I needed a police record check, made sure that was up to date. With my um, working with children check, make sure that was up to date. My first aid certificate, made sure that was up to date. And then, um, I already had a bit of a nursing background. I actually won a scholarship to do nursing. And, um, but I thought I'll just go and do a few uh, short courses. So I did a few short courses. And then I knew that I was quite comfortable and confident enough to um, approach Ma Mabel and um, set myself up to become a sole trader and um, put myself in the community. That's true, because starting your own business can be a bit of a journey, can't it, really, if you've never never done it before. Um, was there anything surprising that happened in setting up your, 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 your small business? You said you were very well organised and you'd done your research, but anything that people should know about? Um, just, um, I mean, if, if you've got a passion for um, caring and a passion for looking after um, people that need help at home. It's something, if you want it bad enough and if you want to do this type of work, I come from a, a sales industry before nursing, but I knew my passion was caring. And I knew that um, for me to um, follow my passion, I needed to be patient and follow the steps that I needed and before I knew it, within two months, I had everything that I needed. And that's when I then called Mabel. And um, yeah, they just took all my credentials, um, all my certificates. Um, of course, I did a bit more study. Um, and yeah, I was ready to go. I was quite chuffed with myself because, you know, something when something looks really daunting, if you break it up into little pieces and just do one thing at a time, today I'm going to go and look at how I can get a police record check. Today I'm just one step at a time and before you know it, you're ready to go. So, Jo, how do you manage tax, super, leave, your accounting, the accounting side of the business? Um, uh, well, just with any individual return that you might do, you just accumulate... Uh, receipts um, and just pull them out at tax time. Have a good accountant um, who knows about small business obviously and can give you advice. Um, good point you've made because yeah. certainly before anyone sets up a small business it's a good idea to talk to your trusted advisor whether that's your accountant or a bookkeeper or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, important not to just you know run into it without doing that. Um, Tammy setting up the business, how did that go for you? Um, it was a new experience, a learning experience definitely, but um, in regards to what you are saying before, getting yourself a good accountant is really important if you're like me and don't have the time and you're not too sure about those things. Um, setting up the business is not as daunting as um, what your mind may feel it to be. It's just a matter of being able to put your ducks all in a row, I suppose, do research, talk about it, 
um, even bring people on the platform, Mabel, and be able to discuss those things with them and then just step out and do it, yeah. Because the number one question we get is how you set your hourly rates. So tell me, how did you do that? And I'll ask so everyone that. It... What I did, because I came from agency and you're basically told this is what you're going to be um, getting for your hourly rate. What I did was I researched on Mabel, actually, and I had a look at other carers um, servicing the areas of similar needs that I wanted to get to and looked at the rate they were charging from Monday to Friday and obviously the weekend um, and overnight rates as well. So, And then I was able to work out a rate from that as to what is fair. Because it's also important, isn't it, to take into account the costs of doing business. Mm. You know, things like your super and your leave and your, your, the cost of petrol, which is becoming more of an issue um, these days. So it's important to set your hourly rate knowing what your costs are, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, jo, um, for um, you, um, how did you set your hourly rates? Um, it's changed for me throughout my process with um, Mabel. Um, obviously, the rates are not comparable to um, an award rate. So um, you just have to look at what everyone else is charging online and see what their experiences are. Um, I've also had clients offer to pay me slightly more than my rate, which right. was an indicator that my rates were too low. Um, well, so they really valued you. Oh, as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you've just got to gauge the market. <laughs> One of the most difficult things is putting up your rates, isn't it? So how do you have I that have discussion? It. Yeah. What, sorry, what was that? Putting, putting up, putting up your, your rates. rates. Because, if, look, if we just think right now, petrol prices have gone through the roof. Mm. That's a cost of doing business mm. for you guys. So how do you have that discussion? Anybody got any... I, have, I, I, I think haven't. That I haven't. You haven't. I think you've got the, to have beauty okay. of, <laughs> the beauty of that is... Um, when, if you've got that um, working relationship with your client, and, and most of us do, um, that's something you can discuss with the client because if you're talking about an increase in that hourly rate, you've also got to remember it affects the client yeah. as well. So um, setting that hourly rate in motion when you first take on that client and contract, those are things that you have to think about as well. Whether it's fair to set just one rate because you know that you're going to have them over a course of a long period of time that's viable for them. Or if you're going to have them like as a high care that's only going to be for a short service of time, then perhaps that's when you need to be able to think about that hourly rate at a different level. Okay. Another thing I just want to say, I've yeah. just done a living um, role where I lived in the household for a week with um, a family member. Um, the wife and the daughter wanted to go away on a holiday and they hired me to live in with that family. Um, instead of charging them an hourly rate for the whole time that I'm there, we agreed on a one set rate, yep. so yeah, it was just one bulk um, amount, mm. and we agreed that you know that that was affordable for them, and that that it was feasible for me to be home with that family member for um, the the seven days that I was there, so. Being a sole trader, that's the flexibility you can, of your job. You couldn't do that if you were working no, for an agency. No, that's right. That's true. Um, marketing, how do you market yourself? Um, jo, you've got some views on profile photos and so on. Mm. The profile picture is extremely important. Um, being an online profile, it's probably the one thing that clients are looking at first and making judgment on. Um, sometimes if it's not the right photo, um, they won't continue to read your profile. So the profile picture has to look professional. Um, you have to have a smile. Um, you have to look engaging um, and, you know, easy going. Um, yeah, obviously if you're not going to smile, it's not going to look like you're easy going. So, um, yeah, I can't stress how important 
the profile picture is. <laughs> what about bios? Um, Tammy? Wording's important because the way that you communicate about yourself to whoever's looking at your file, um, you can think of it as communicating it one way, but the actual person reading your profile could think of it another. So I think um, wording is very important. It's always good to perhaps have someone else who maybe is a little bit more experienced than that if you've got uncertainty. Giving as much information and obviously the truth about yourself um, is very, very important because as well as the photo, what people are reading about you is either going to be welcoming for them or and um, enabling them to know, yes, that's exactly what I like. That's exactly the personality I, I would like. And so it's really clear communication and wording is very important. So Suzanne, is it important to ensure that what you've got on your, in your bio shows when you're available, what you do, what you don't do? How, how honest do you have to be in a bio? Well, my policy is the policy of honesty is the best policy. Um, if you're not truthful, sooner or later you'll get caught out and you will lose respect with that family. My bio is um, very honest and um, saying that, you know, I never had grandparents in my life and um, because they were abroad, of course, and by the time I could afford to go see them, they had passed on. So my passion was to look after the elderly and I just found them that their life stories and their histories. And I, I wrote that in my bio saying that, you know, working with the elderly is just not a job for me. It's, it's, it's a delight. And I show my passion in my bio. Um, and with my photo, of course, like Jo said, um, you can't wear, which I love my holy jeans with all my holes in them. Um, you can't, you have to look professional, you know. Um, if you like dogs, maybe hold your dog, you know. Something, that, uh, something that's personable to them. You know, that's a really interesting uh, comment you make because um, pet friendly um, is one of the most frequently searched characteristics on the, on the website. So lots of people, lots of people have animals and they want to... Uh, yeah, show them show them or have people who also yeah. like animals. Uh, animals as well. I, w I was surprised by that, but isn't that... Yeah, it's lovely. That I mean, I don't have an animal because where I live, I can't have animals, but it's lovely that, you, you know, a lot of my clients have pets, they're company pets, mm -hmm. um, and for them to see a pet on your profile, if you, you only get one picture, of course, yes. so, you know, Sell yourself. You're selling yourself. So if you, you know, by looking respectful, as Joe said, and professional, and you know, if you love your pet and you've got a gorgeous-looking pet, show him off. Now, Suzanne, how do you select clients um, that you really want to work with? I understand that uh, that you've got a screening process, and you might like to elaborate on that. Yes. And I'll, then I'll ask others for comments on it. My screening process is that um, our as a sole trader, our um, roles or jobs or clients come through either an email to me, my personal email, or you can look on the Mabel platform and it has um, a tab where it says jobs. And that is new jobs that are coming into the system for the um, staff that want to um, take on more clients can go to that um, tab on the Mabel platform and look at what the job entails. Um, as I become older, I found I couldn't do um, some clients because they were just too heavy for me. Um, my passion is the elderly, so I screen my clients now by um, their, their need and who the clientele are. My area, I like to work within my area because you've got to remember if you're travelling from, let's say, A, B and C, your three clients, if you're travelling from A 
to see and there's an hour travel, um, you have to work out your, um, your graphics on, on, you know, where your directions are where you're going. So you're not spending most of your time for an hour job spending an hour travelling. So you have to be uh, quite um, organised in picking the clients that you want to work for in your area. Um, their needs um, and then uh, their risk assessment. Um, are they, um, if, if it's a disabled, um, a, an aged care person that I'm looking at, are they incontinent? Are they mobile? Are they um, um, aggressive? Because with dementia, you'll get aggressive behaviours. Um, what health issues do they have? You know, I've got a client at the moment who um, has some high care needs. Are you experienced enough and are you confident enough to look after those high care needs? Um, and uh, do they live alone? Um, that's important as well because sometimes you end up in a, in a family household um, and they've hired you to um, look after their loved ones but slowly but surely you end up looking after the whole family by doing the dishes for the whole family, doing the washing for the whole family. So you need to work out if that's going to happen, if you're going to go into a household and there's a, a, a whole family living there, you need to know your boundaries and you need to know um, when to politely say to the family, look, I'm employed to look after the client. I'm sorry, but I'm not here to look after the whole family. And, and they will take advantage of that. So once you've decided the client, you would um, then um, call them. They will um, either send, you send them a message. We have a, a, plat a, a message platform where you would send the client a message saying, I say something like, hi, my name is Suzanne. Um, I've just seen your ad on the Mabel platform and I would like to make contact with you and discuss this role further. You can either give him your um, mobile number if you like or if you don't want to give out any personal details first up, use the Mabel platform. It gives you the platform to message your client and to discuss their needs on the platform. And then I go from there. There's more to that. Then there's a meet and greet, um, um, discussing the fees, but that's wh where I start. Okay. Jo, we were talking earlier mm -hmm. about what happens when you've got a client who um, you're three days into the role and mm -hmm. it's just not working mm -hmm. uh, or you're really worried. Mm. Yeah. What do you do? Communicating is key. Um, so bring it up early, talk to the client or the client's family if mm -hmm. they're not able to communicate. Um, bring up the issue as soon as possible before <coughs> Excuse me. It either affects you or the client. Yeah. So you know, early early intervention is That's the right. is the story. Yep. You really need to make sure that parameters are set. Tammy, do you want to talk about that? Boundaries are very important uh, for the protection of yourself. So as we're speaking, so that if a behaviour or an issue occurs, it doesn't escalate. So I think it's you need to be very firm about the services that you're providing. For example, you're not there to look after the whole family, you're there to look after the client that you're, um, you're there to look after. So I think it's good if you have those boundaries that your communication is very clear. For example, I'm a very um, bubbly personality and I just, I, I love to chat, I love to be social, I love to help wherever I can. And I found when I first started out with a particular client, I did things because I wanted to, but then it was expected of me. And then if I didn't do them, then um, the family was questioning why. So I think the boundaries are very important as to what, the, what, what you do, yeah. So, Tammy, have you taken an opportunity to invest in training or acquiring new skills? Um, I have. Um, that's what I love about the platform. There's always um, levels of different um, training that you can do, but you don't have to do it just with Mabel. You can do it with other uh, avenues as well. So, yeah, so it's very good like that. 
because there is a lot of training available on the on the hub. There is definitely a lot of well. a, a lot of training, and um, which I think is good. So you can so you that's what I was saying before. You you're not alone. So you can up your skill level all the time. You can learn and educate yourself a lot more about um, areas that you may feel that you lack in or that you're uncertain. Um, it's really an, um, important for me to get across that you're not alone, like the education is there. Um, and the beauty of that about the learning hubs is we all have different learning ability. Some people who may be looking at this and, and they may not, uh, English may be their sec second la language and there's a lot of people out there where it is their second language. The learning hub is very, very good like that because it's something that you can do as a process and get the extra help from people as well, interpreters or what have you, to help you with that particular learning course. So, yeah, it's very good like that to keep current. A lot of it's current, it's updated, and it's events and things that are happening now, which are really good. That would have been particularly important during COVID, I, I imagine, for staying up to, 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 to speed on what was actually happening in that space. Suzanne, do you, have you used the hub? No. <laughs> yes, you. No, I haven't actually. Um, I do have a mother who is in care in a okay. nursing home um, and that nursing home has a lot of um, seminars for families on dementia. So I take advantage of um, th those facilities right. and what they offer, um, whatever dementia training or anything on dementia, I'm mainly um, dementia focused with my um, work now because um, I specifically work with aged care now. Um, and yeah, because my clients um, with aged care, like it's dementia or their um, ability or um, their behaviours, I've done a lot when I did study, mm. um, I did my Cert 4 in aged care, yeah. so I did a lot of study um, back then. Um, but in the last two years, no, I have not. Um, jo, you, fo you focus on dementia. I yeah. do, yes. So, and that's an area that is, that is changing, isn't it? In, in terms of you know, treatments, other approaches. How do you stay up to speed on that? Um, I have a lot of experience with different types of dementias um, and I see a lot of similarities. Um, and I guess I can be quick to spot out um, what's coming to the client. Um, but in terms of keeping myself up to date, um, yeah, being um, a busy mum, I don't really have a lot of time, but um, I do try to educate myself where I can. Um, but, but it, you know, there's a limit to the, to the hours in the day. Yeah. We? And we all, we all know that, and that there certainly wouldn't be expectations. That, yeah, but, but definitely if there's something that comes up that's not within my scope of knowledge, I'm definitely out there looking for information on that just so um, I can help whatever client I'm helping out. Well, that sort of runs into my next question, which I'll, which yep. I'll throw to you, Jo. What do you need to be mindful of? Because you are working independently, not yep. in, a, in a big organisation. What, what are the tips you can share about, you know, operating, working um, independently? Um, I, I think don't offer support um, if you're not qualified to is a big one. I've seen yeah. it time and time again. Um, you're not covered for it, and so don't do it. Um, and um, it's and and you you said before that you from the platform itself you can get um, you can get support as well if you if you're being asked to do things you can't do or you're just not sure about. That's right. That's right. And but there is a community. Yeah, and it's also about communicating with families because families will like like you were saying earlier about families will take advantage it happens all the time and if you're working for yourself be aware of it and make sure you're communicating um, and and letting the clients know it know it's not okay um, is key that's absolutely true do you have a, a support um, a debriefing system if you've got 
you know? Uh, I work in teams of okay. um, people I'm able, so okay. I will, that would be my first avenue, um, obviously, to talk to my team. Um, and I guess my second would be I'd be on the phone to Mabel asking whether they've got um, connections that they can get me in contact with. How about you, Tammy? Same, same thing for me. So I work within a team as well um, that, that served a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week roster that we have. So the um, team that I work with, we've been together for three years now. Right. So um, we have this really good working relationship with each other. And whenever we need to discuss, we have a coordinator as well that we can talk to her about. Which she's like the, the daughter. So, um, and it's it's worked out really well like that so yeah but if I ever needed to feel like I needed to discuss um, an issue or something that I'm having problems with I would I would talk to another co-worker or even someone in Mabel or what have you yeah so question to all of you do you think there's misconceptions about working in this in this sector both in disability um, and in aged care I do. I believe that a lot of people think that what we do is just looking after palliative or d uh, patients with dementia. Yeah. But actually it's more of a broader scale than that. When you go on the Mabel platform, you actually have got n um, services that perhaps weren't asking for that particular help at one point in time. Like for instance, a lot more children, yeah. babies, yeah. Um, companionship. Um, not not just for the for the elderly, but for younger. Um, so the the care needs across the community are absolutely broad. So looking at Mabel, just don't think it's for this type of service for the aged or this type of service for disability. It's actually more than that. Because it's about quality of life. Isn't it, it is it rather is. than care, as as I think Peter said in in his speech. So does that mean from time to time you have to um, help people understand what they might want or like? Do you have to be a bit inventive sometimes to, to because sometimes I suppose people don't know exactly what would work so for them. I, I find for me I, I don't just work with aged, I work with younger ones and teenagers as well and so this is where communication is really good with the family and with the client to be able to work out a care plan that um, that works out for everyone but specifically for the client because being able to do that, being able to provide that specific personal care service for them in their home is such a huge, um, a huge difference opposed to what they would get in traditional care. And that's the beauty about being um, working for yourself via the platform. And so it's looking at your client and the needs that they have and being able to, yes, make those suggestions. Um, so I'm very artistically and musically wired. So I found being able to do the things that I love to, love to do and introduce those things to my clients and has led to be able to take the clients out to go to theatre and things like that. It has been an awesome journey to be able to give that service that you know that they wouldn't get otherwise. I think that's probably been, after the discussions I've had with all three of you beforehand, I think you're all um, in, in that boat. So what benefits do you see as being part of the Mabel community? That with you? For me, um, I'm a grandmother now <laughs> and I can uh, work up until um, two o'clock, one o'clock some days. Like yesterday, my, grand, my daughter called me and my grandson was sick. I was able to go and collect him and look after him for the two hours while his mother um, kept working. She was a t she's a teacher as well. So when she finished school, she could collect him. And having that flexibility with our time and picking the clients that we want to work for and um, the areas. And I live luckily near the water and I take every opportunity to get out there on my kayak on the lake, you I know. I kayak too. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it's great. It's great because you get the freedom to, to, to work and do something that you love, but you get the freedom to enjoy your life as well. Your quality of life matters too. 
as well. Yes, as of course. Place. Jo. I was going to say flexibility in hours as well. I've just recently come off um, doing 12 hour days um, to um, having to cut that short now in order to pick up my little one from school. So she's just started school and I need to be with her in the afternoon. So um, I've worked around that by starting really early in the morning and I finish at two now. So um, yeah, it's just been great that I can still work the hours that I need and still do um, family time. That's great. Tammy, what's flexibility? The yeah, I agree, 100% and lifestyle, definitely. Yeah. Being able to work your um, hours around your own core needs, your family needs, or perhaps if you, like me, my children are all grown and older, but I have my grandkids as well, and also my mum, so I'm able to work out those needs around my family needs as well. Yeah. Because it also means that you've got access to um, a whole range of potential clients, doesn't it? From Absolutely. The, and you can do all the things and they're, you... And they've got the most amazing experiences, you know, like their lives, you know, like I've got a, a war veteran from World War Two that I'm wow. still working with, you know, and I worked for a man that wrote the Play School song. Oh, um, really? Yes, I, I did. And <laughs> his, fam his wife was uh, David Attenborough, is it? Yeah. His secretary. Wow. So, yeah, That's I've awesome. met some amazing people, um, professional people. And how exciting is that to be true. able to listen to their stories? They have so much to tell you. And, you know, I love to hear them. And, yeah, so... OK, because I've got to go to the last question now. I'm going to ask all th three of you. Um, have you only got, got any last tips or words of advice from someone who's listening today um, about starting up on the mobile platform? Is it something they should do? I, my tip is um, when you look on the job tab about the jobs that are available out there for the, um, the girls and the staff, don't pick one job and sit there and wait for an answer um, hoping that you'll get that one job. Um, I, I don't put all my eggs in the one basket. I apply for maybe three to four jobs and um, s often two of them don't even answer me uh, for reasons maybe they've picked someone else or th I wasn't suitable um, looking at my profile. But um, having picked, um, applied for other two or three jobs, they come in and go, yep, Suzanne, that you're exactly what we want. Can we, um, you know, give you a call? So I call them on the phone and then I have a meet and greet. So my advice is don't just pick one uh, job on the platform. Put out a few feelers and see, you know, they may not all be right for you or your time slot's not right for that client. So, um, yeah, my advice is... Okay. So, uh, my advice is... Um, give it a go. Um, if you're hesitating, don't. Um, just give it a go. Absolutely. Tammy. Do it. You won't regret it. I mean, I did and I love it. Um, I wish Mabel was around sooner. I would have saved me the heartache of going through traditional aged care and not feeling valued. Um, so just do it. Believe in yourself. Well, can I say, having met you, th three of you, T today, um, I think the people that uh, that you uh, look after, that are in your lives, are very are very very lucky. And I think the message to everybody out there is you actually can make a difference. Yes. Back to Peter. That was certainly a great discussion, and I want to thank the panelists and, and Kate. And look, there's so much to take away from that discussion. I almost uh, don't know where to start. But at the end there, when, when you know, I was hearing messages like, give it a go, do it, you won't regret it, I'm thinking about there's Mabel's next uh, marketing slogan. Uh, but um, look, I, re I really think that the passion, the professionalism and the empathy that all of you display really comes through, right? I think you should be incredibly proud of the businesses you run. And I think you've shared really generously um, lots of insights from your own personal experience in the sector and on Mabel. And I think people are going to be very grateful for that. Um, you know, I really like uh, the value you place on flexibility and the quality of your work life and being able to work around your other life commitments. I think, you know, th this sector we operate in is about care and support that's given to people in communities everywhere and it's given by people that live in those same communities. So 
how we bring people together and allow people to work it out flexibly together, I think is really the key to the future of aged care and disability support. And what will attract people into the sector is that you can do really important work that makes a difference to people's lives, but it also can work around your own lives. And I think this is the key to unlocking workforce in communities uh, everywhere. And I, I love the sort of, you know, comments around, you know, believe in yourself, trust in yourself, but do the research where you need to, invest in training where you need to. Um, I think, you know, be thoughtful about setting rates, I think was another great message. You know, it's not only do your research there, but also think about um, the costs of running your own business and make sure you're valuing yourself and the services uh, you're delivering. I thought also there were messages around, you know, you can also start part-time. You don't have to leave the old world behind and jump 100% into Mabel. You can free up an afternoon. I think that was one of the pieces of advice and start taking clients uh, in, air, in, in periods of time where you've got gaps in your roster or you want to make yourself available and, and uh, go from there. I also like the messages about you're not alone, right? I think that really it's great to see that so many of you are already working in teams which is great for support, but there's a wider Mabel team, there's a wider independent support provider team that's available uh, to go to for uh, support in your own work lives. Um, so I, I thought there were some really uh, great messages that, and, and great tips and insights that you've shared today, and I think we're really um, grateful for that, and I think the audience is grateful, and thanks for everyone for being part of today and submitting your questions. We are going to have a recording of the session available so you'll be able to go back and, and rehear some of the um, stories that have been shared today and some of the tips that have been uh, shared. Also, don't forget the Learning Hub. I think you know, being able to upskill and grow your knowledge of how to support your clients is a great uh, opportunity. But just to wrap up, I'd really like to thank Suzanne, Tammy and Joe and Kate for, for facilitating the discussion. You know, Mabel is stronger because of all of you. Mabel is stronger because of the community that gathers around the platform to engage with each other. And we are really grateful that we have the community on Mabel that wants to co-design the solutions, that wants to think differently, to be able to work differently, to help us shape the future of aged care and disability support together. So thank you to our panel. Thank you to all of uh, you. And I really hope Mabel can continue to work out how we can best support you to grow your own business and, and be successful in this sector and deliver great care and support to people in your community. So thanks again. Um, and you know, we'll continue this dialogue through other sessions like this. Thank you.